Well, it's Sunday the 3rd of April and a warm welcome to today's talk. Now, I've had a lot of questions about the new variant. First of all, is there a new variant? Yes. Uh, what's it called? Well, it's called XE. It's a variant of Omicron. Uh, should we be particularly worried about this? I really don't think so. Will this become predominant, uh, displacing the existing Omicron? that we have now, the BA2, which is the predominant form we have now, yeah, it probably will replace that over a period of time. I'm not expecting it to make people sicker, and I'm not expecting it to have immune escape, but I think it is more transmissible. So let's look at that now. That's the essence of today's talk. If you, don't want, to, if you want to skip it, feel free, because the rest of it is a bit technical. It's taken me a while to work it out, so I would appreciate it if you'd stay, because it took me a while to work it out. So here it is. It's largely from this. UK Health Security Agency, SARS coronavirus, two variants of concern. So this is their sort of latest update that we're just getting around to doing now. And it is consistent with the World Health Organization's latest update as well. Good to see that national updates and uh, World Health Organization updates are uh, consistent with each other. But mo mo mostly, from the, from mostly from this paper here, th th this one, do check it out. Um, it is... It is a difficult read uh, because it's very technical but as you can see it's all very well uh, spaced out into its various components so it, it's quite a hard read because of its technicality but unlike the CDC reports it's written in sentences and paragraphs so it, it is intelligible if you can spread the spend the time and decode it a bit um, strange strange why there's such a difference the CDC reports are so badly written in my view and, but the, the, the UK one, easier to read, but, but this is technical. So anyway, so stop uh, prattling on and get down to the business. Variants of concern. Now, here, here, we, uh, here we have it. Now, the, the, they're, not gonna co they're not gonna have variants under investigation anymore now, so it's just VOCs. And this one is called XE. So what is XE? XE strain is a recombinant variant of BA1, and BA2. Now, viruses do not produce uh, sexually. So I'm a recombinant of my mother and my father, obviously, <laughs> as, as indeed are you. Um, viruses don't do that. But what sometimes happens is that a BA1 virus in this case and a BA2 virus, both Omicron, will both infect the same cell. So a person will be exposed to both strains of the virus at the same time two viral particles will get into one cell and their genetics will mix up inside one cell during the viral replication process so it's not sexual reproduction but it is a recombination but it has the kind of effect of a of a sexual reproduction because it can give rise to new properties so that's kind of the that's kind of the biology of it but it's a combination of BA1 and BA2. So it's both Omicron. So those predictions I was making there are based on the fact that this is still an Omicron. It's a new type of Omicron. It's, a, it's an XE Omicron. <laughs> uh, this is the new nomenclature which we're about to look at as well. Uh, but it's still an Omicron. It hasn't changed into a hip hippopotamus or, or a virus, uh, measles virus or a different type of SARS coronavirus 2. It's still an Omicron. That's, that's the, the key reassuring point. Now, mutations, uh, 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 when an error is incorporated into the viral genome. So a mutation is, is a change in the genetics of, a, of an organism, really. But a recombination uh, is co-infecting. So when things are infected together, viruses exchange genetic information, creating a more novel virus. And here you can get a bigger jump in the in the uh, in the characteristics of a virus now they've changed the classification system as we as we said so variants of concern label um, now if there's a detrimental change in the biological properties like change in transmissibility severity immune invasion immune evasion like, like, like there's immune evasion in omicron clearly compared to the current dominant variants and a growth rate potential. In, in other words, it's got these characteristics, but it's also going to outgrow the other one because little mutations and little things happen all the time, but because they don't have a selective advantage, they're quickly selected out and they basically cease to exist. So if it has a growth advantage as well. And they've designated new variants based on uh, genomic features and growth. So that makes sense. Now, this is the code they seem to be using. Now, <laughs> They don't actually put this anywhere, but this is what I've worked out it to be. So X seems to be the code for BA1. E seems to be the code for BA2. 
and X and F are both deltas. Now, th these are just genetically different forms of deltas, but they are both uh, deltas. So, so there we have their new uh, classification that they, uh, the British authorities are using now. So um, <clears throat> two are a combination of delta and BA1. So it gets a bit confusing here, but XD and XF are combinations of delta and BA1. Now we were calling this uh, Omicron, um, Delta Cron. People were talking about Delta Cron, combination of Delta and Omicron. So that is those two. So XD and XF. Remember, but we're we're talking here about uh, XE, which is the one that's more prevalent in the UK. So XD, which remember is a combination of the Delta and the Omicron. A few cases in France, Belgium, and Denmark. Not that many. Literally uh, a few tens of cases. An XT, which is another combination of uh, Omicron and a different form of Delta. There was a small cluster de detected in the UK, but it's never been seen since the 15th of February. So it looks like that one has now uh, died out. And as we said, these are going to come, they're going to go. They die out if they don't have a selective advantage. So that one doesn't seem to exist anymore, but this one does seem to have a few cases in Europe. So that one there is the Delta Cron, the combination of the Delta and the Omicron. I hope this is making sense. The way I've written it down is, is correct. Um, but it, it, it is quite fun to follow. Um, so there's one recombination of BA1 and BA2, and this is XE. So this is the one that's become more prevalent, up to about 1% of cases in the UK. So this is an Omicron Omicron. It's not a Delta Omicron. It's not a Delta Cron or a Omi Delta or anything like that. It's an Omicron. Omicron, it's the BA1 and the BA2. So that's the key thing to remember. XE is a combination of BA1 and BA2, recombinant, as a result of a co-infection. Uh, XE, evidence of community transmission within England, currently about 1% of the total sequence cases. And the UK sequencing, um, we're actually doing more sequencing in the UK than anywhere else in the world. We're not doing more per capita. Denmark uh, has, the, has the accolade for that, but we're doing a very large numbers of these. So this is being picked up quickly. So we could call this the British variant or the British recombination, but I think it's probably just because we're doing more and we've picked it up quickly. Uh, a, bit, a bit like Omicron was first picked up in South Africa because they do a lot of testing. Right, using the most recent data up to the 16th of March. So, OK, it's, it's the 3rd of April now, so it's a bit out of date, but it's what we've got. XC has a growth rate of about 10% above that of BA2 per week. So you would expect over a course of weeks it would um, displace the, the, existing, uh, the existing BA2. So it looks like over the course of the next weeks, even low cases are going to plummet, the XE will become more prevalent than BA2. And we could expect the same thing to happen around the world. Now, in the United States, they're still going to the, the BA2 uh, resurgence that we've predicted for some time now, but then that'll gradually be replaced with X, uh, XE variant is what's going to happen, but quite slowly because the growth rate isn't fast. Uh, it, the, the advantage isn't as big, <clears throat> whereas the advantage of um, Omicron over Delta was about 75% more transmissible per week. So it's ne nearly double, nearly double. Um, but that's where we're going to go. Now, this figure is tentative. It's only based on data up to the 16th of March. It could change, but it does look like it has a growth advantage. Now, this is based on 763 sequence cases, actually sequenced, which is actually pretty good. Actually pretty good. XC is BA1 and BA2 combination, recom recombination, as we've said. It's a bit of both. Uh, and this, strangely enough, there's three mutations that are not present in BA1 or BA2 seems to have popped up. Where the heck they came from, I don't know. I assume it's just normal uh, variation that occurs. And these mutations could have occurred since the, the co-infection event uh, occurred that gave, gave rise to the XE <laughs> in the first place but we don't know but from what i can tell and do correct me on this if you think i'm wrong from what i can tell these are not spike mutations that they're, they're on other parts of the virus as far as i can tell but it is somewhat hard to decode uh, what they have uh, what they've said but there is these strange three mutations not surprisingly really, because it's mutating all the time 
Now, um, so that, that, that's where we are, basically. Let's look at some pictures. Let's look at some pictures here that illustrate this, hopefully. There we go. Right, um, there we are. So this is uh, this is basically the past, uh, well, the past eighteen months or so. A a April, um, April and February twenty one. So it, here we see this. This was alpha predominant times here. So this is when alpha was predominant. All these cases here, and then of course purple took over, and purple of course is the. Uh, Purple, of course, is the um, <laughs> delta. Delta, of course, that's delta. So um, that's alpha. Before that, there would have been the Wuhan strain, of course, but alpha, delta. Now, there was a little bit of this zeta here, but it didn't really get too much. And then uh, Omicron took over. Firstly, uh, BA1 Omicron here, and now BA2 Omicron is now... Uh, is now predominant but we see the way that the uh the uh zeta don't get confused with zika zika is a completely different type of virus that's tragically caused microcephalic changes in, in unborn children particularly in south america the, the, this is zeta the greek letter zeta but but it never became it never became particularly predominant as as we see from that graphic so there we are we're in ba2 now and if you actually look here just creeping onto the bottom there, <laughs> you can't really see it, but there is a tiny bit of grey there, and that represents the uh, the XE. We now believe that represents the XE, the XE um, recombination. Now this graphic here is quite interesting. This shows the uh, the S gene target failure. Now this is the era of uh, Delta. And Delta was uh, S gene target positive. But then we could tell the difference when Omicron came along because Omicron was S gene target uh, negative, at least the BA1 was. But then the, uh, the, BA2, the BA2 Omicron came along and, uh, and BA2 is uh, S gene target positive. But we know that these, uh, th these cases here um, are not the Delta because we have only Omicron now. So since he, that, 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 that there is the Delta dying out uh, completely. So even although we have uh, S gene negative PC, uh, sorry, S gene positive, let's say that again, even though we have F S gene positive PCR tests now, we know that they're caused by BA2. Now this is um, interesting. This is, so that's Delta there. Uh, that's BA1, that's BA2. This is the XD variant. This is the XE. And this is the, uh, th th this is the um, XF. So the XE is the one we have in the UK. So we can see the break is there. So we can see that that part of the genome there is BA1. And that part of the genome there is BA2. And we can see there's no green in that. So there's no delta. Whereas in the XD and the XF, there is a bit of delta. So that's kind of the genomic split. And this shows the results from the SIREN study, the reinfection. We'll look at this in a bit of detail later. But this shows that the, uh, there was some reinfection amongst about 40,000 healthcare workers. There was some reinfection in delta, but the reinfection, BA1 reinfections completely spiked and BA2 reinfections completely uh, completely spiked here, uh, indicating the potential for uh, Omicron to evade the immunity caused by previous infection and uh, vaccination. But anyway, go going on with some of the, uh, some of the detail here. Um, so um, BA2. So this is a bit of a recap of what happened in BA2 times, really. We can now, we can now pretty well give the story of the, of the BA2 so uh, S gene uh, target positive is a reasonable proxy for BA2. So remember the BA2 was a target, S, S gene target negative. So we now know that the S gene target positive cases, because everything's Omicron now, must be BA2. And uh, th then that means this is good because this means we can take the results from all of the PCR tests done in the country. Um, all of them. Uh, England on the 20th of March 2022, 93.7% BA2. So there you go, BA2, as we predicted, has completely, virtually taken over, 93%. In 
in Denmark, of course, it's it's over 99%. <clears throat> um, and on the 6th of March, two weeks before, it was uh, 82.6. So that gives you an indication of the rate of growth between uh, BA1 and BA2. Um, yep, B, growth rate of BA2. Uh, in, increased growth rate compared to BA1 in all regions of England. And uh, the growth rate of BA1... Sorry, the growth rate of BA2 over BA1 is 75% greater. So it's quite a lot. If it was 100%, it would be double. So it's really quite a lot more transmissible. The BA2 is a lot more transmissible than, than the BA1. A lot more transmissible. That's why, of course, it's become... That's why it's become the uh, the predominant variant, as we saw on this graphic here. The BA2 has taken over from the that's the BA1 that's the BA2 and the BA2 has taken over because it's 75% uh, more uh, transmissible quite significant gives a growth rate of 0, uh, 0 0.75 uh, per week as I said if it was not if it was one per week that would be double now hospitalizations no evidence of greater risk of hospitalizations following infection with BA2 compared to BA1 uh, we did predict this, but it's really, really good news to have that confirmed. So we are really pleased that's uh, being confirmed. And as well as, well, it's being confirmed in all the data that we've looked at as well as this. So, But it's good to have multiple uh, collaboration for something that is so important. Now, just briefly before we finish the SIREN study, um, SARS coronavirus 2 uh, SARS coronavirus 2 immunity and reinfection and evaluation with an N <laughs> siren. Okay. Now uh, they, they take a 90 day gap, so it's a reinfection. So, in other words, if it's like a 10 or 20 day gap, you could still be having some viral residue from the previous infection. But a 90 day gap between positive PCR tests. And the good thing about the siren study is it's all based on PCR tests, it's, it's high quality testing. Um, there's 44,000 healthcare workers in the study, 135 sites, pretty good stand, uh, samples by any standards. Now, highly vaccinated. So these people are highly uh, vaccinated. And yet, despite being 95% vaccinated, we still had this huge reinfection spike <clears throat> with uh, Omicron. Indicating the um, immune escape. <clears throat> that Omicron has from the from the vaccine induced uh, immunity. Okay. <clears throat> um, no technical issue here. There we go. That's what happens when you knock your uh, camera. <laughs> right. Any. Anyway, um. So, uh, ninety five percent vaccinated. Two weekly. Uh, PVR. That should be PCR testing, of course. And here, here we see that that graphic that I've just shown. So uh, that is the breakthrough infections, um, breaking through the vaccination and the natural immunity with uh, Omicron. But as it does, enhancing natural immunity because it's another natural uh, infection. Uh, so that's that graph there. I've shown you that. That, that, that is all on the, um, the, um, the first site I've showed you. It's all on. That's all, all, all these graphics are on this site uh, here, that's the UK one, that's the WHO one there. But click on that, it'll take you directly to it, so you can see this is genuine data. Um, 27th of January 2021 to the 16th, sorry, 27th of December 2021 to the 16th of January. Now, this is the time when uh, Omicron was displacing Delta. So they've got nearly half a million cases of PCR confirmed reinfection. Huge numbers of reinfections. 186,000 of these were BA1, so that means the rest were... Um, well, th th this, is, this is where... So the rest of those are most likely actually to be Delta because this is where the uh, Omicron was taking over. This is the time period where Omicron was taking over from Delta. So that confirms the rest of the national data we had. 31 of these cases had another subset uh, sequence, uh, subset sequence. So this could have, so these could have been, this doesn't tell us this, but this could have well be the, um, 
this could well be the variant that we've been considering, which of course is the XE. <laughs> you can tell I haven't memorized these yet. So were these XE? Uh, presumably they could have been, which of course is a combination of BA1 and BA2. Uh, but the Siren study authors do say there are no early indications of a specific reinfection issue with this scenario. So it looks like it's another Omicron. So that's the difference between Omicron and the previous um, in, uh, waves in terms of reinfection. Am I expecting uh, similar problems as a result of the, um, the, the change to the X? Oh, XE to the change to the XE. No, I'm not expecting that. Let me show you why not. Because even although there's some changes, um, people that have been exposed to Omicron, most of these, most of these proteins and the antibodies and the T and B cells they stimulate are going to be the same. There's about 26 what we call epitopes in here. And there's going to be a lot of cross immunity as a result of that. But it could well be that uh, XE is going to spread through the population and become more dominant than BA2. So it looks like uh, BA1 recombined with BA2 is more transmissible than BA2 on its own. So there you go. I think we managed to get through that more or less. Um, do 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 read the uh, the, the references. The, 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 they're all there. Quite interesting. Um, but that's where we're at. So needed clarified but not particularly worried. If anything, if, if, the, if the XE is 10% more transmissible than the BA2 on its own, if this combination of BA1 and BA2 is more transmissible, then that's only going to increase the rate at which herd immunity is generated throughout the population. And as we say, no indication at all that it's going to cause more uh, hospitalizations or other problems as yet. Tentative days, um, we're not probably not going to get another technical update for some time yet. But but when we do, I would expect XE to be um, to be much more. So if it's one percent now, that, that, then we, we can expect reasonable growth over the next few weeks. But that's going to be in the background of overall decreasing cases, of course, as spring comes to the the the, uh, the England and Europe and the United States. Thank you for watching.